Uh, good morning, everyone. So as I said, I'm Vanessa. I work as the health project manager at the shared service of the Ministry of Health in Portugal. We also understand how difficult it is to set up an electronic health record. It took a long time for us to actually be able to share data among all systems. So understand, but it's possible to get there. And I think you are in a good uh, starting point and position to advance. And as you mentioned, of, of also taking uh, efforts going in the EU will be very important. So for today's presentation, I'll just quickly, and I hope everyone can see my uh, slides, I'll just go, it's going to be a short presentation on a piece of work that we develop that could be uh, useful for Czech Republic in the effort to develop a M health program, which is our M health policy framework. So I will just, sorry, uh, briefly go through a policy cycle just to set in the scene, then talk about the uh, policy framework and then uh, a little bit how this could be useful for Czech Republic and please interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. So as you all know policy cycle it is a cycle it is a continuous evolving uh, process. Um, we in this case we consider only four phases because we know that we want to talk about MAF so is this our need so advance of course for formulation and follows adoption and then the implementation and monitoring evaluation which looks a little bit like a first phase that we have a team that is actually making all the effort to draft the policy, including a lot of research, collecting data involving the stakeholders, and actually having a document that normally is reviewed uh, before submitting for adoption, which at the government level, normally it's at the government that approves or not, it sometimes needs to be reshaped. And if approved, it goes to implementation, which implies actually getting it disseminated and delivered to the responsible um, organizations, assigning resources and putting in places, which happens in together with the monitoring evaluation phase, which is actually very important for us to know if the expected objectives are really being met. And sometimes, as might seem strange, actually this is one of the phases that sometimes is not didn't went as expected. But it's very important when drafting new policies or even updating the existing one. So this is our, our basis for what we call our HEM Health uh, Policy Framework, which is a document that is co trying to contribute to harmonizing uh, the HEM Health uh, in Europe. Uh, so we try to build this based on share lessons um, and recommendations to allow promoting such harmonization. This policy uh, targets primarily policymakers and implementers. Uh, and is already available on the hub site, so you can freely uh, download it. I have left here the link and we then can provide it. Um, and it's a tool that it, that mostly offers the first step into it. Uh, but how did you achieve such a policy? So first, we basically did an analysis of the policy landscape and tried to identify what would be important and relevant common areas. And this led us to what we call the main eight uh, M Health strategic policy areas that comprehend the shared expertise and knowledge of the hub. And I'll talk a little bit more about each of one. And actually, during the workshop, a lot of these will be touched uh, up upon. Um, so, oops, sorry. <laughs> so, for each of these policy areas, we then try to identify use cases that uh, addresses these policy areas. Of course, uh, a lot of policies and strategies cross some of these uh, policies, do not only address one, we just wanted to give you uh, how it was built, good practice. We analyze society to see trends and opportunities as well as recommendations. So for example, I noticed like the reimbursement, we analyze the two front runners in the reimbursement scene, which is the German and Belgium examples. Um, so we also analyze and have been quite interactive in learning some of the good practice. For example, one advantage of the German uh, advantage on the point of view of developers is that it's actually most uh, fast than the Belgium system that tends to be lower and uh, taking more time, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so this will actually help a lot in desk research already because you have a lot of use cases for each of these uh, eight policy areas. And on top of this work, we also interview different representatives of the Ministry of Health. Um, we had 10 countries, uh, including one region, which is also present in our uh, workshop. Uh, we wish to have more, but COVID actually also 
was not uh, very easy because these are the people who were actually leading with COVID. We also interviewed Czech Republic. The idea here was to have different levels of maturity to understand difficulties, good practice, um, grab as much information as possible. Uh, for example, the region of Catalonia was the one that only the only example with a very specific M health strategy while in the trend and even Catalonia is involving for that sense is to advance for a more e-health general approach where M-Health is addressed and in a way it allows to leverage uh, the infrastructure because there are shared parts among both. I mean M-Health is inside of e-health. Um, for example, some of the questions that we took, I, you just mentioned for example the, the M-Health industry sector is not being as big in Czech Republic and how this could be, uh, how could this be more attracted? For example, finance pilot projects uh, in, in a way to build assessment framework can actually help to give a sense of assurance or sense of uh, return to develop because they feel like they can, they can see that this is evolving and we can build more here. So it's just uh, an idea that was mentioned, for example, as a Belgium um, uh, good practice. Um, and moving a little bit on the presentation, these, all of this information it was what led to the HEM Health Up Policy Framework. So what we did was grab all of this information, uh, transform it in process, which is a high level of active activities that need to be taken. And this act, uh, process then transform in procedure, which is like, how can I actually do this process? And then we extract examples uh, that fit within that and provide clear recommendations that can be used. Of course, this is a high, high level because it's not developed specific for any country. So basically offer, and I'm going to pass to the next slide just to have a, an idea. So basically it gives you a step in our first approach to how to advance. So for example, here is an extraction of one of these uh, tables. So per policy area, per policy phase, then it, it is offered process, procedures, examples, or recommendations across the different needs, steps that you will have to do it. Uh, and this, of course, uh, is transversal. It can be applied whatever development phase you are, and it offers you uh, help to start up and even guide us what could be good practice and then adapting to the country context. So now looking Back at the Czech Republic, uh, there has been, as mentioned, a lot of advancement. Uh, so while there's no specific M health, we already mentioned there are parts of M health being in approach, but we consider it for the M health itself to be in the phase one, the formulation phase. So moving just a little bit here, um, there are different phases during the formulation, uh, and it is just an example of some. And the first one might seem like two. Uh, basic, but at the same time is one of the most important because when setting up a HEM health, and you mentioned, for example, the reimbursement, if you mention only medical devices, for example, such as the Germany and the Belgium example, you know that you will need to involve the national company authority that is responsible for their approval. And as you mentioned, all health insurance. So this is very important because resources are limited, money, time, budget, uh, people. So it's very important to have these at the start because these will identify clear what are your stakeholders, what steps you need. So start with these and then it will save you a lot. Uh, and then of course you'll get, uh, go through your process. Uh, also very important to understand the legality process. Um, there are and it depends on the countries, and I'm not an expert by no means by the Czech Republic, but for example, there are countries that allow to have a resolution that make uh, like a legal binding to the need to develop that policy, which shows that this policy is something that needs to be developed. So it's not something starting and then you come to the approval and government changes sometimes and it's difficult to bypass that. So just have that in mind. So I think this work will be very good for you helping especially in the first steps um, and I wanted just to mention also this work for the World Health Organization and ITU which also provides a toolkit helping uh, in uh, going uh, addressing this uh, 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 I'm sorry uh, policy so just wanted to hand just with overall recommendations uh, there were across transversal across all policy areas which is the need to promote an inclusive and transparent policy 
and this can be done by involving all stakeholders since the beginning during the implementation and monitoring. This helps to raise awareness. Uh, which will help to increase the likelihood of adoption. For example, the involvement of healthcare professionals or associations representing them to understand, for example, why prescribing HAPS is important because you are involving them and they can also give you the feedback and how they should, how they can trust on that process because it's very important to build trust since the beginning. And of course, it will help to build a more comprehensive approach. Of course, political endorsement, we all know how important it is and probably the most challenging one. So even involving high level institutions is very important because it is built pressure in using people, citizen voice, because at the end of the day, citizens are the most important and can make pressure. And there's an example, for example, the Netherlands was actually the citizens that made the demand on the electronic health records. Um, you also mentioned, for example, with, uh, towards this one, which is actually looking to the existing strategy and see what can be leveraged. For example, the health, but even outside the health department, there are other uh, strategies that can be uptaken, such as when there is a digitalization department, uh, because building, for example, the infrastructures, a lot of this can be taken up. And as you mentioned as well, the international cross border activities being in the EHDSI, the EDAS, there's a lot of projects right now uh, with direct grants from member states that can be helpful in these uh, advancements. And as you mentioned, of course, interoperability standards, there are a lot of international standards out there. Of course, it can be also challenging. And as you mentioned, you are at the beginning and there's uh, first steps. So of course, the most advanced ones, the most structured one are also the most difficult, but you have a path and having clear objectives is also very important. I think, uh, Mario, if you could mute it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, this also comes uh, together what we're saying with the harmonization and working together with member states and the uh, European Commission is also very important because all countries need to actually raise their voice to help uh, build something in the, EU, in the EU, which is not easy, but can um, be uh, in favor of all countries. Uh, the finance projects I already mentioned, and of course, uh, while promoting this integration with existing infrastructure, guarantee quality, transparency, and compliance with standards from the beginning and with that also provide clear guidance to developers because sometimes governments establish this is what I, we want but then they explain how we actually can be achieved and that helps developers to find it more easy to navigate. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. If you have questions, just let me know. Uh, but of course, this is uh, available on the hub. is happy to share the information. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. We have a few minutes time for questions or considerations. If, if, I, if I may comment, uh, that, yeah. that's, uh, thank, thank you. It was a great uh, presentation. Uh, how to approach uh, health, uh, let's say, top level point. Uh, actually, many elements of, of these activities we incorporated our in our uh, project called telemedicine telemedicine uh, in m health of course this is the national uh, recovery uh, plan uh, financed project which should be launched uh, this year if it is approved. so uh, there is a question how to uh, coordinate uh, this uh, this uh, activities with the activities in the projects how to do the synergy of, of, of uh, uh, ongoing activities here in the Czech Republic and, and uh, activities of, of Held Hub. So th 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 we, we, we may not have the answer now, but uh, if, if Held Hub is uh, uh, willing to, to continue in, in support, uh, it would be really great opportunity to, to put things together uh, to a point, of course, uh, what you can on your side and what, uh, what can be uh, also done from our side. Uh, but definitely uh, we are open to this uh, cooperation. 